Now, we've talked about what a binary tree is. Let's look at how we would build one. So here I have a Java class for a binary tree, and this could work for any type of programming language that's an object-oriented language. We're going to need a value, and I'm just going to use an integer because that's real easy to work with. And then we need our left and right nodes. Notice that I have actually named my nodes left and right just to make it easy. Now, a simple constructor where we're going to have a default value. Notice that when I've created this, I never am going to have where I get child nodes automatically, not in a standard binary tree at least. So I'm not going to worry about creating those. I'm going to assume that those are null. Now I need to be able to get my value. Now, we're going to assume we never need to change the value of a node, so I'm not going to get a set value put in there. Now, I'm going to create the add node. Now, when I add a node, I'm going to assume that I'm going to be passed in a data value of the type that I'm going to use. So for our add node, we're going to check to see if a value is less than our current value. If so, we're going to go to the left-hand side. I'm going to say if value, that's the value that we're being passed in, is less than this dot value, then I'm going to move it to my left-hand node. Now, what happens if I don't have a left-hand node? That's something I need to check for. Because if I don't have a left-hand node and I try to go that way, I'm going to get a null pointer exception. So we're going to see if this dot left is equal to null, then I'm going to create my node and I'm going to assign it. Notice I just did that all in one command instead of creating a command and then reassigning it, just a little bit faster and easier. Now, if I have a node, this is going to be an else statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this.left.addNode, and I'm going to pass in a value. Now, this is not a recursive call because now we're talking about a different data object. We're using the same method as our different data object, but it's not for our object, it's for the left nodes data object. We're going to come here to our outer if, and we're going to have an else. And this is if our value is greater than or equal. Now, in some cases, if it's equal, what we'll do is we'll maybe increment a counter inside of our binary node. That's not what we're doing here. We're moving everything that's greater than or equal to the right-hand side, partially for simplicity's sake. I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did with my left-hand side. In fact, I could actually copy and paste this and just replace left with right. So instead of saying if this.left equals null, I can say if this.right equals null. Well, in that case... I'm going to add a new binary tree node and assign it to my right hand. Otherwise, I can go this.right and call my add node. So it's literally the exact same logic. It's just, am I going to the left hand side or am I going to the right hand side? Very, very easy for us to work with as far as how that goes. While that is a little bit of code, and you can see it's almost a screen full. It's really not that much if you look at it. Now let's build a search method. 
Now, if we were working with objects, let's say we were looking for people and we had a, a person object and we were searching based upon name or based upon a student number or a social security number or something else like that. Though well, maybe I return that object instead. However, since we're just working with integers, we just want to know, does this object exist? And so what I'm going to do real simply is have a public method that's going to return a Boolean. So what I'm going to do very first is I'm going to check to say, hey, is the value that I'm passing in via parameter, is that found inside my node? So if value equals this dot value, I'm going to return true. That is, I found it. Else, if value is less than this dot value. So we not equal. Now we're going to check to see if we're less than. We're going to go and see, okay, maybe I need to go and call my left node. However, I need to verify that my left hand actually has a node. Remember, my left hand child node may not exist. So I'm going to say if This dot left is not equal to null. Now, what am I going to do if my object is not null? Well, I'm going to return what it calls. And I'm going to return this dot left dot search value. Now, remember, this is not a recursive call. This is a child binary tree node. So it's a completely different object and we're calling it search method. And then whatever it returns, we're going to return as well. Coming out here to my other outside, we'll have one final else. And this is going to be on the right hand side. We've checked for equality. We've checked if it's less. And now we're going to check on the right hand side. But first we have to say if this dot right is not equal to null. If it's not, then we are going to return this dot right search value. Now we may have a case in here where we do not return a value. We've got three returns. We're returning true if our value matches, but if it doesn't match, we go to left or right. What happens if at some point the left or right that we need to go to is null? That means our item that we're searching for is not found. And so if we haven't returned at this point, we've gotten to the end of our method and we're going to return false. So this now always gives us a return feature and it's going to let us find that information. So very, very simple about how that's going to work. Now, another method we tend to see is some sort of print method. And this allows us to parse and see every element inside of our binary tree. We're going to see them in order. We just have to think about how are we going to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a public method. Void print, and notice I do not take any parameters. So how am I going to do this? Well, if I look at a binary tree, I know that my smallest numbers always go to my left-hand side. And once I don't have any values there, I can then print my current number, and then I'm going to check to see if I have a bigger number. So for example, I'm going to start with 8, then go to 3, then go to 1, I don't have a left-hand side, so I'm going to print one. I'm going to see if I can go to the right. I don't have a right side, so I'm going to move up to my parents. I'm going to end my function call, and I'm going back up my call stack. Now that I'm done with the left-hand side, I'm going to print three. So I have one and three, and then I'm going to see, can I go to the right? I can. I go to six, 
I see, can I go to the left? I can't. It's four. Do I have a child? No. So I'm going to print four. I'm going to see if I can go to the right. Then go up. I'm going to print six. I'm going to see if I can go to the right. I can't. I go seven. Then I check to see if it's left and right, etc. So this is the basic algorithm that I'm going to use for something like that. So the way it's going to work is going to be very, very simple. I'm going to see if this.left is not equal to null. I'm going to call the left nodes print. Now, if my left node is equal to null, I'm not going to go and print it. So what am I going to do if I don't print? Well, we're going to use system.out. And I'm going to print this integer. And a space. And I'm good as far as that goes. Now I'm going to see, can I go to my right hand side? If this.right is not equal to null, this.right.print. And that's all I have to do. I now have the ability to add elements, search for elements, and print elements. Let's take a quick look at how that would work. So I'm going to create a binary tree node app. I'm going to create a random object. I'm going to create a binary tree node. And I'm going to call it root since it's going to be my very top of my tree node. And I'm going to give it a default value of 100 just as my first one. I'm going to put in a random number with a maximum upper limit of 200. So this way, in theory, it should be fairly well balanced. And then for simplicity's sake, I could either do a search or I'm just going to print out all my nodes. Now, if I run this, you can see that I print out 26, 54, 98, there's my default 100 that I started with, and then 122, 134, etc. If I run this again, you're going to see I get some different nodes, a little bit more balanced. And I can run this a few more times, and you'll see how it changes each time. So that's the basis of how you can very easily create a binary tree in an object-oriented language like Java.